Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. Basically, he is my ex-baby daddy, if I can even call him that. Me, female 22, and ex, male 23. Let's call him Dan. Dated for about six months on and off when I was 18 and he was 19. Consequently, I fell pregnant, and he did a huge jerk move and ghosted me after I told him. Due to a lot of stress from his actions and still living at home, just starting my bachelor's, I had a miscarriage around 12 weeks. I went to tell him, but he had deleted and blocked me on everything but Facebook Messenger, where I messaged about a month after, don't worry, you're off the hook, I lost the baby. I hope that eases your stress. Once I saw he had seen it, I blocked him before he could reply, as I didn't want to interact with him. Mind you, he never once messaged me before. So his fiance, female 21, let's call her Jen, and I had a mutual friend, co-worker. It was their birthday. I went and so did she. I did not know that this was Dan's fiance. Anyways, we got to talking and pretty much stuck with each other cause we didn't know anyone else other than mutual friend. We were talking about our partners, explaining how we met them and all that. And somehow the conversation changed from that to our exes and how horrible things had ended with them. I mentioned my ex and how he ghosted me when I got pregnant and all that. She said that was horrible and then proceeded to say that it sounded like a similar situation to what her fiance had been in. As his ex fell pregnant to trap him cause she found out he was going to end things and then had a miscarriage a while later. She then at one point mentioned his name and I realized who he was and I was the fake pregnant girlfriend. I was livid, and since both her and I had been drinking, so we were both a little intoxicated at this moment. I went off and started talking absolute crap about him and telling her that he lied about me. I even went through my phone to show her proof that I was actually pregnant, as I still had screenshots of ultrasounds and doctor's notes on my phone. I even went and showed her the multiple messages I had sent Dan as I never deleted any text message, even the failed to deliver ones, as he had blocked me, so I couldn't message him. I ended up going home quickly after, not giving her the chance to take in everything to respond to what I told her. About a month later, I was getting a bunch of nasty texts from my and Dan's friends, saying how much of a bee I am, and how dare I stoop so low to get him a month before his wedding. I was extremely confused, cause I had no clue what was going on. I asked what they meant, but was obviously blocked as the message never sent. I later got a friend request from Jen as well as a message request from her saying that she had called off the wedding and she apologizes for any rude messages I may get as I am the reason they split, because she didn't want to marry a liar. Feel like I'm not the a-hole, but wanted to share this anyways. This was not something you set out to intentionally do. Karma has an interesting way of working things out. He made his bed, so he can sleep in it alone. Rum Soaked Chap says, Not the a-hole. This is what happens when you tell elaborate lies. He got caught and has to deal with the consequences. You help the fiancé dodge a bullet. Disregardable says, Not your problem. He's the one that lied to his partner and ruined the foundation of his marriage all by himself. Good for her for recognizing a red flag and getting out. Alert Bid 1531 says, Not the a-hole. You probably saved her a lot of heartache in the long run. And it seems like you have a new friend. Honestly, win-win situation for you both. My soon-to-be mother-in-law, 49 female, is still absolutely in love and best friends with his ex of five years. Let me say this. I understand it's not easy to just let ex go. She was a part of their lives. I'm not expecting mother-in-law to shut her out. However, in the course of our one-and-a-half-year relationship, his ex has been consistently mentioned in almost every conversation had between me and his mother. Multiple times I have stated how it makes me feel uncomfortable and asked for her to not talk about her with me. I finally lost my nerve when she pulled me aside the day before Thanksgiving 2020 in my own home and told me about how she and the ex talked about very, very personal issues between me and fiancé. I ceased contact with her in order to process my own emotions and talk to my fiancé about how I felt and how it made me feel less respected as someone who was soon to be a real part of his family. We both decided the best option would be that his mom and I go to therapy and talk it out. 
She insisted that it's not fair that I can speak about my own exes, and she can't talk about her son's exes. I do not have any current relationship with any of my exes whatsoever. And she states that she talks to his ex every day, while she only contacts me and her son every few months or so. In October of 2020, I decided to quit smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol because I had some real issues. A moment of bonding between mother-in-law and I was chatting and gossiping over cigarettes and coffee. Even after I explained to her that it's better this way and that we can find new things to do, she continues to say it's not the same, which I agree that it's not, but I'm making better choices for my future, her son's future, and our future children. The therapy meeting, March 2021, did not really solve any issues, but did give me the opportunity to state my true feelings. Since then, nothing has changed, and mother-in-law has turned his family against us in a way that makes it seem like I intentionally hurt her or made her feel bad, which it may have, and that wasn't my intention at all, but I'm not going to let my feelings be invalidated. Am I the a-hole for trying to stick up for my boundaries with my mother-in-law? Well, in my opinion, OP clearly has a boyfriend problem. It's his mom and his ex. He should be taking charge, not sitting in the middle in the background. I know it's not a popular opinion, but as I've mentioned before, I don't understand when parents still keep very close relationship with their kids' ex-partners. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Nexodus says, not the a-hole. If your mother-in-law wants to be in contact with your husband's ex, then this is her decision. But if she cannot accept that you do not want to hear about that person, she is way out of line. You need to step that behavior out hard. This is not about this topic. This is about her trying to push her borders and see how much control she can assert. Also, if your husband should not support you in this, you have to really consider if you want this situation for at least a long time. Talk to him and also enlist him to protect yourself from her behavior. Full Prune 7491 says, not the a-hole. Why does she feel it's not fair to talk about somebody else's ex? You should make up an ex and talk about how great his mother is. She's a saint. She volunteered to save abandoned baby seals. She recycled. She sings to blind orphans. She raises money for kids who can't afford school lunches. She dances with one-legged veterans. Then ask your future mother-in-law what she did today. Then compare everything she says to the fake ex's mom, saying how nice she did something, but she did it better than her. Also, mention how your ex's mom would have made the best grandmother. She already knitted a blanket for your unborn child. Talk about how close you are with her. You would even give her one of your kidneys if she needed it. Then continue to say things like how nice she tried, but other mom is so wonderful. Do this every single time you interact with future mother-in-law. So I proposed to my girlfriend last November. We've been dating for three years and I got her a ring that we picked out together. Before I met her, I was briefly engaged to my high school sweetheart, but we split on mutual terms that were still very painful for me. The ring I had was sold to me very cheap by her grandma, an heirloom ruby ring from the 1920s. After we split, she didn't want the ring back because of memories. I tried to give it back to her grandma, but she didn't want it either and told me to keep it to remember them by, which was really nice. I didn't really want to keep it either, but felt bad about selling such an old item, so I gave it to my sister. Well, my now fiancé found out about this ring while at my sister's house a while back. She saw it and fell in total love with this ring. She's admittedly really picky with jewelry and struggles to find stuff she's willing to wear long term. But she tried it on and it was a perfect fit and exactly what she had wanted without knowing it. We've now been fighting because I really don't want her to wear this ring. My sister says my fiancé can have it if she wants and obviously she really, really wants it more than the one we picked out together. I don't want to see this ring on her to be honest and would rather her wear anything else. My fiance is disturbed I still care so much and now accuses me of not being over my ex. I am over her. I just don't want my fiance to wear this ring in particular. I feel like this whole situation is bizarre, but both my fiance and sister are telling me to get over it and let her wear this ring. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Lots of confusion over the ring ownership. I gave this ring to my sister years ago to keep in her jewelry box, since I don't have one. I told her she can wear it herself or give it to someone, as long as she tells me. If my fiancé wanted this ring to wear very occasionally, I'd be more okay with it. But she wants to wear it exclusively as an engagement ring, all the time. And she'd want to tell people I gave it to her specifically for our engagement, 
not as some random gift from my sister. All of this I'm extremely uncomfortable with, considering the tough period I was in the last time I saw that ring every day. OP's girlfriend is accusing OP of attaching sentimental value on this ring, when it's actually the complete opposite. This ring holds no sentiment for OP, and it only serves as a painful reminder of a failed relationship. This isn't the ring you would want to use as a symbol of your love, in my opinion. And for me, it's bizarre OP's fiancé wants something that reminds OP of his old love and failed relationship. Why would you want that? Guys, would you want to wear a ring that your partner previously proposed to someone else with? I personally wouldn't. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Chelsea the Pirate says, Not the a-hole. Even if it's a gorgeous ring, I don't understand why she would ever want to knowingly wear a ring you specifically bought for someone else. That's just weird to me. Penguin says, Not the a-hole. What's disturbing is your fiancé wants to wear a ring that belonged to your ex and her family. Literally an heirloom of your ex's family. That's disturbing. My Ask Reddit account says, No a-hole. Find a shop that specializes in vintage jewelry and use that ring to show them her style, preference. Or go to a place that makes custom jewelry. She's got tunnel vision right now, but there's better solutions. I, female 20, am married to my now husband, male 20. We have two children together, both female twins. My stepsister, female 26, has been in their life since they were born and has been a huge help until she got a boyfriend who got her pregnant. She recently gave birth to her son and her boyfriend and her broke up soon after, co-parenting their newborn son. She has still been living with us and it has been no problem. Soon I realized money from the nightstand in my bedroom had been disappearing. I never left huge amounts of money in there, just in case. My sister has been buying her son very expensive things. She doesn't have a job, so I have been a little suspicious on how she has bought all of these items. Yes, I want the best for her and her son. I've asked her numerous times to get a job, and I can watch her son as I am a stay-at-home mom. One day, more than just money disappeared. My iPad, my mother's necklace, and around 200 pounds and a watch went missing. That week, my sister came home with new baby clothes, toys, pampers, etc. She was even wearing new clothes and accessories. I questioned her about my items, and she denied and said she never took them. I was still a little suspicious, but decided to let it go, as I could easily replace those items. I decided to set up cameras around my house in case she had been taking my things. I was showering, and my husband was at work, and my stepsister was watching the kids. I leave the bathroom to see my room left in a mess. My dresser had been gone through, and my nightstand was left open, and everything in it was missing. I immediately went to my stepsister and asked her about my missing items, and she continued denying. I told her I was going to check the cameras, and her face went pale. I pulled out my phone and reviewed the footage to see my sister entering my room and leaving minutes later with a lot of my missing items. She screamed in my face and said it was her only source of income, and she shouldn't have to steal those things, instead they should be given to her, as she has been a huge help and needs the money for her son. I told her to give me back all my things, or I will get the cops involved. She said no, as she needed the money. So I told her to get her son and leave my house. She went to our father's house with my stepmother. They have been blowing up my phone calling me a selfish a-hole for not helping her with money, as she cannot afford to buy things for her son, and my husband makes plenty, so I should help her. So am I the a-hole in this situation? Aggressive Bed says, not the a-hole. This is insane, entitled behavior. It's great that she was a huge help to you, and if she had come to you and asked, I bet you would have been happy to help her. But she didn't. Instead, she's been stealing things from you, and then lying directly to your face about it. Then she even doubled down by refusing to give the items back after admitting she stole from you. You did the right thing by getting her out immediately. Away Awry says, not the a-hole. If your stepsister needed something, the only right choice would have been to ask for help. You were already letting her stay over, apparently rent-free, which is a huge personal burden. There's not a single universe in the multiverse where the right option is steal my stepsister's stuff so I can buy stuff for my baby. I would report this to the police and cut all contact. This is the kind of level of breach of trust that you don't come back from. You don't need people like this in your life or around your children. There's absolutely no good that will come from people like this. 
If your father and stepmom are so irate about you not letting her steal your stuff, what the duck? They can buy that stuff for your stepsister. By getting the police involved, you are drawing a hard boundary, and I think that is in your best interest. Ebony Doe says, Not the a-hole. Not only should you kick her out, but press charges and sue her for stolen property. Just because she screwed up her life by having a kid she couldn't afford is no excuse to steal from family. Okay, for context, I'm 20 female. I was named after my great-grandmother on my mom's side who passed when my mom was young. I'm the youngest of my siblings. I was close to my step-siblings growing up, but after realizing how my stepmom and two out of three step-siblings use my father and literally leech off of him, my oldest stepsister, 25 female, has two kids. Her oldest, four male, was named after my brother, 23 male, and her youngest, seven months female, with my name as her middle name. She didn't speak to me or my brother about naming her kids after us, including our names and their names. And I just think it's so weird because, one, both of our names are not common at all. Two, I haven't spoken to that side of the family in almost a year. Three, my brother and I were always left out of sibling days by our stepsisters. The only way I found out about the baby having my name as her middle name was when my dad sent me a picture of the baby with her name at the bottom. I did block my dad's number after he sent, as that was the first text I've received from him in over six months, and I was very upset. I've given them all the silent treatment since then, as I just want no part of that weird family, and I just feel like it's a way of replacing me and my brother, as we've grown detached from that side of the family since my dad pretty much prioritized them, rather than my brother and I when we were minors. Part of me feels like I might be overreacting, but I just think it's weird that my name was taken without a discussion. So, am I the a-hole for giving them all the silent treatment after that? Edit. I do want to give it a little more info. So, we grew up apart after I had tried to be involved with them, and they made no effort to be involved with me. I was taking the bus from my community college in the suburbs to the city to go see them. I would try to organize family days on top of my studies. Yet, when I asked why my dad didn't bother to call me, first he would say, the phone works both ways. None of them would reach out to me, and that's when I had sort of detached myself. It wasn't until after this that I realized how they were to me and my brother growing up, and how they treat my dad. My dad is pretty much the sole provider in their household, which my stepsisters and my dad's wife live, even though he doesn't make that much. My stepsister leaves her oldest to my dad's wife and my dad to take care of, and the dynamic is weird. When my dad lost his job, his wife didn't step up or anything to contribute, so my dad had to keep taking out loans to support everyone. The announcement of her name was shortly after I had made it into university, after being a high school dropout, so it was a big thing for me, which none of them congratulated me or even acknowledged me on after my brother told everyone in their household about it. I feel like it was weird as duck considering I had accomplished something really big for myself. Also, I never said I owned the name. It's just odd that she happened to name both of her kids after my dad's only biological children. GJWTGF says, Not the a-hole. It sounds like this was just the last straw rather than being the specific only reason you cut them off. We can only deal with so much crap before we have to put ourselves first, and it seems you're just trying to get away from their drama and issues. Try to forget about them. Get your head in the right place, and then decide if you want to reconcile or stay no contact. Hushes says, not the a-hole. I would keep an eye on your accounts, credit report, and any properties where you may be an heir or beneficiary. My uncle named his son with his third wife after my grandfather. Here's the thing. He didn't get along with my granddad. He already has a brother and nephew with the same name, and he told no one about naming the baby. It was weird, right? Well, my grandfather died with quite a bit of property, assets, etc., my uncle collected some of the assets, claiming his son was the owner. Talk about a long con. Cronberry says, You're the a-hole. Sounds like a pretty standard overreaction to me. Is it weird that she named her daughter after you? Yes, but I don't see anything worthy of getting upset over. Nothing your stepsister did was mean, except for them excluding you from sibling days. But that's not what the post is about, really.